All right. Um, hi guys. Good evening. Um, if you're able to see me, hear me, and also see the screen, um, send a hi, good evening, something in the chat so that I know the setup is good, and uh, we can get started. Okay, perfect. Yes. Um, hi guys. So um, we have had two sessions so far. This is the full stack development um session. Right. And we've had two sessions so far. Um, today is the third session in the same, uh, you know, in the same domain, the full stack uh, sessions. And so far, what we have done is we have taken a brief look at some of the terms associated with development. That is what we discussed in the very first session. And then uh, in the previous session, we have started programming, very simple programming with HTML. Right. So HTML, again, is hypertext markup language. It is a language that we use to add content to a website on the internet. And we've just start, started looking at some basic HTML code. Uh, we have taken a look at what a tag is, what an attribute is. And we have covered some basic tags in HTML. And today we're going to continue that discussion, continue the HTML discussion and talk about a few more tags, uh, understand a few more tags that are available in HTML. But before we jump onto that, um, as always, there are a couple of quick logic questions for you. Uh, again, I have Zoom chat open. I also have YouTube chat open. So no matter where you reply or where you ask questions, I will be able to answer them all. Right? I have YouTube open as well as Zoom. So don't worry about you know where you are joining from. As long as you are able to hear me and you are here, um, all good. No matter if you are there on YouTube or Zoom. Um, you should be able to comment out and I should be able to help you um, with that. Right. Great. So as always, um, how this works is I'm going to give you three questions one by one. I'll put the question on the screen. Then you will take a minute to think about it. Put your answers in the chat. Uh, then we'll discuss the correct answer and then continue to the next question. Right. Before that, if we take a quick look at the agenda for today's session. So again, we are going to focus on media tags today. Right. So uh, we are we have already discussed, you know, some of the tags like text tags. Um, we have already discussed a couple of other things with HTML. We'll do a quick refresher or a recap of that as well. And then we'll focus on media tags um, today. Right. So media includes, you know, adding images, adding audio video to the page, all of that, as well as, you know, adding tables and forms and other things. Uh, on the screen. So we'll take a look at how to add all of these types of content to HTML uh, in the session today. This is a brief agenda, uh, as you can probably see, uh, you know, on the screen. So this is basically a quick agenda for the session. And yes, um, let's jump into the first part, which is the think it through part. And uh, here is the first question. So as always, what you have to do is you have to think about it, put your answer in the chat. And then we'll discuss the correct answer and then move to the next question. Okay. So the question is, I have a face, but no eyes, hands, but no fingers. What am I? This could be a real world object. It could be something technical. It could be something we use on a daily basis. It could be anything basically. So give it to thought, put your answers in the chat. Then we'll move to the next question. Okay, perfect. So we have received a couple of um, responses in the chat. Let's quickly check them out. Um, some of you said mirror. A uh, mirror is not the correct answer. There is nothing to do with face or eyes in the mirror anyway, let alone hands. But yes, um, some people say mouse or monitor. Again, that is not the correct answer. Clock is the correct answer. <laughs> so yes, most of you have got this right. Clock is the correct answer for this question. Again, a clock has a face, but no eyes. Um, a clock has hour hand and a minute hand. That's what we call it, but no fingers, right? So yes, 
um, to lock is the correct answer. Perfect. Uh, let's move to the next question. So here is the second question. The second question is the more you have of it, the less you see. Again, I'll give you a minute. Think about it. Uh, put your answers in the chat. And then we'll move to the next one. So for everybody who is basically, I think just, um, you know, typing out the same thing that others are typing in, uh, sight is not the correct answer here. I think one person put sight and then everybody is just putting eyesight, eyesight, eyesight. That is not the correct answer. Uh, please think about this. Take a minute, think about it and then respond. It's fine. You can take a minute um, to think. So yes, uh, try to come up with the correct answer. Don't just randomly reply. Oh, you know, with what others are putting in the chat. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So the correct answer here is darkness. Right? So dark or darkness, uh, technically darkness is the correct answer. The darker it is, the less we can see. Right. So the more you have of it, the, the darker it gets, um, the less we can see. So darkness is the correct answer over here. Perfect. Um, here is the last one for this round. So this one says, I am always hungry. I must always be fed. The finger I touch will soon turn red. What am I? Again, it could be anything. Give it a thought. Put your answers in the chat and then we'll discuss the correct answer. Right. Perfect. So fire is the correct answer here. Most of you have got this right. Um, fire is the right answer. So fire is always hungry uh, because it always needs fuel continuously. And again, if you touch something, if you touch, uh, you know, let's say by mistake, if you touch the fire, then we burn our fingers and it turns red. So yes, fire is the correct answer to this one. Perfect. Um, that is the, those are the three questions for today. Again, you know, we'll eventually move to more technical questions uh, in the next couple of sessions. But I just want to set the context, um, you know, by giving you some sample questions, simple questions first, and then moving on to more complicated questions uh, session by session. Great. Now that this is done, the next major part of our agenda is to quickly re recap what we have already discussed. So, so far, we have already talked about two things in HTML. So, the first one, as uh, you know, we have already discussed in the previous session are text tags. And within text tags, we have talked about these various categories or these specific tags. Right. So we have talked about heading tags in HTML, which is again H1 to H6. Can you quickly tell me in the chat which is the largest heading um, in HTML out of H1 through H6? Which of these is the biggest or the largest? Perfect. H1. Great. H1 is the largest or the biggest heading that we have in HTML. Uh, then we have discussed paragraph tags with P. Right. Then we have discussed two types of lists. So ordered lists and unordered lists. And then the LI tag is list item, which goes inside those lists. Then we have talked about some basic markup like bold, italics and underline. Right. Then uh, we have talked about comments in HTML. So how do you write a comment? And again, comments are basically ignored by the browser entirely. So those are uh, basically used for two things, leaving messages for ourselves. And then, you know, um, testing certain pieces of code. Those are two places where we mostly use comments. Then we have some miscellaneous tags. So that includes line break and HR. Um, so line break is basically mimicking the enter key on the keyboard, uh, putting content on the next line. And then HR is for a line across the 
uh, page. So from the left end of the screen to the right end of the screen, that is what the HR tag will do. Perfect. So this is something we've already discussed. And then the second major thing that we've talked about or the second um, type of tags we've discussed are links in HTML. So remember, we talked about three links, right? We have talked about linking to an external web page, then linking to an internal web page, and then linking to a section on the same page. So out of this, can you quickly tell me again in the chat, which of them requires HTTPS? Where do we have to mention HTTPS? in these three. Perfect. In the case of external links, we have to mention HTTPS. In the case of internal, we only have to point to the file where we want to go. For example, about contact, if we have more than one HTML file, we can just mention the path to that file and that will work. And then in the third case, linking to a section on the same page, First, we have to give an ID to the section where we want to go. And then we put hash the ID, right? hash followed by ID in the href attribute of the link. Perfect. So uh, based on the response in the chat, I am assuming that this is clear to everybody. Whatever we have covered so far is absolutely clear to everybody. We have talked about text and link. These two things are already been have already been discussed. Now, Let's move to the next category of tags that are available in HTML, which are media tags, right? So there are four major media types that we can add in HTML. As you can see on the screen, we can add images, we can add audio, we can add video, and we have external embeds, right? So again, we'll talk about them one by one. Let's start with images. The tag for this again is IMG. So what I will do is I will quickly uh, share the entire screen this time so that you can see uh, VS code and the browser open as always side by side. Again, I am assuming hopefully that you have also installed these two tools and you can also practice along with me, right? So we have VS code on the left, the browser is on the right. Both of these things are open. And again, I've just created an empty file called index.html. Like we already discussed the index file um, or the name index needs to be given to the landing page of our website. So no matter how many pages we have, the first page that we want to open when the user opens our website, that is called index, right? So that is the file name index.html. Uh, that is what we have already discussed. Now, the next thing to add an image, basically, we need the image tag. It's very simple. It's IMG. An image is a self-closing tag. Because unlike other text elements, we don't really need any content for the image. So it's a single tag or a self-closing tag. And let me just zoom in. So this is what that looks like. Right? This is practically it. This is the image tag. Now, what we have to do here for the image is specify a couple of things in attributes or specify a few things as attribute. Right. So the first thing that we need, of course, is the source of the image. So where is this image coming from? Right. Uh, if it's a Google search image or if it's an image on the internet, we have to add the location. If it is something on the system that we have downloaded, we have to add that location. I'll tell you how to do that in a second. Then the next attribute that we provide here is height and width, right? So how, how much wide or tall do we want the image to be? And finally, the next attribute that we provide is something called the alt attribute. Right. So this alt attribute will basically work when the image is not showing up. So let's say for some reason that the link you are using for the image is invalid or something goes wrong with the loading of the image, the user's internet issue happens or whatever reason happens because of which image does not show up. In that case, the thing that we put here, the text that we put here will show up. So this is a very, very important attribute. It is called alt. Alt stands for alternate. So what happens when the image does not show up? That is what the alt attribute is for. That is what we have to specify uh, in this. So let's fill this up one by one. Height and width are optional. So if the image is too big, we might want to you know, give external height or width or explicitly specify that. If the image is small enough, then we don't need to specify those things. But source and alt are compulsory, right? So Technically only source is compulsory, but search engines like Google or other search engines give a lot of importance to the alt tag as well. So 
for reasons or to make our web page show up you know at the top of search results we will have to explicitly put all all tags so this is something that is a search engine requirement and it basically improves the ranking of the page right or the ranking of the website right so this is the image tag this is how it looks now let's go ahead and find an image from the internet and let's try to load that up so i'm going to show you one resource now this is called unsplash okay so unsplash.com is a, a very important resource you will use this a lot when working on projects as well um, unsplash.com is a resource for camera images right so this is where you can find beautiful camera photos and they are free to download okay so as you can see here there are some really good photos on this and again uh, these are free to use um, downloadable images so of course there is one section called unsplash plus which is a paid one but generally otherwise these are all free images so the ones that are not marked plus they are free to use and this is where you find good camera photos right so let's just pick one of these you can also search for example let's just search for something like artificial intelligence for instance and you can see that there are some really good images on ai and you can see this robot and this robot so there are some really good images on this website you can definitely use this uh, for other projects as well right so let me load up i think this one we can just try to load up this one so the first way to add an image is to add an image directly from the internet for this what we need to do is we need to right click on the image that we want to add and click on copy image address if you are using google chrome you will see copy image address if you are using mozilla firefox or safari or any other browser you will see copy image link okay we don't have to copy image we have to copy image address or copy image link either way so i will copy this then i will go back to our code and i will just paste it in the source that's it right so you can just copy the image address this could be anywhere on the internet it could be from google search results or it could be from a blog post or any other website on the internet as soon as i do that i have just pasted the link in my source and if i just go ahead and refresh our page now you will see that the image actually shows up now it's a very big image as you can see so what we can do is we can specify the height and the width over here so this is in pixel values so for example i'll explain it to you once again don't worry but for now let's just say i put 500 pixels and 500 pixels um probably let's put it 300 pixels and refresh so you'll now see that the image is actually showing up um and you know it is now tinier a little bit tinier as you can probably see so this is how we can add an image from the internet to our website so this could be again anywhere from the internet so all we have to do is go to the image that you want to add right so for example let me pick another image this time let's say we want to add um this one right so you can right click click on copy image address so again pay very close attention copy image address we are not copy image but copy image address then in your image tag so i'll just add one more image tag here in the source we can specify that link and that's it this will add the image to our website now to make it you know um, smaller because usually the images are very big in size so to make it smaller for the display what we can do is we can add the height and the width so for example if i set the width to 500 pixels the height will automatically be adjusted so even if you specify just one out of the height or width the other value will automatically be adjusted by the browser so as you can see now we have two images coming from the internet then again we have to also specify the alt value now let me show you the significance of this alt and then um, you know if you have any questions we'll take those so um, the alt value will only show up when the image fails to load so for example i will say robot image okay i will put this and then i will just modify the link or make it invalid now if i refresh you will see um okay hold on the link is still working fine let me try to make it an invalid link um yes so now the link is incorrect as you can see right the link is not working and hence if you can see this alt text that we have added over here in the alt attribute this is showing up on the screen right you can see robot image being showing uh, being displayed on the screen if i just remove this alt and then refresh 
you will see it will basically give us this error mess or you know this broken image symbol and that's it but this is very confusing for the user let's say you visit a website and you find this broken symbol you will probably think something is wrong with the website so to indicate to the user or to tell the user what is there what we can do is we can put this alt tag right so that way the user will at least get some meaningful information that okay there is something wrong with the image but there is supposed to be a robot image over here that is one use of the alt attribute the second use is whenever we have a screen reader right let's say you're using your google or siri or any other like alexa any other voice assistant to read um, you know the web page on the screen so this value will be read out so of course it cannot read the image right so it will instead read the alt value that we have given so this is how we can add an image from the internet all right is this clear just put a clear or understood if this makes sense so very simple you have the image tag along with the source height width and alt that's all we need to add an image right is this clear Right, perfect. Now the next question that comes up over here is what is this pixel value, right? What is this PX actually? So this pixel stands for one dot on the screen. Very simply put, right? Our screen, as you might probably know, is made up of tiny dots of LED lights or tiny dots of light, right? So one pixel is one dot on the screen. So when we say 300 pixels, it will take up, um, you know, 300 dots from one end of the left to the right, it will take 300 dots. Simply put, but again, we'll talk more about this when we go to CSS. So when we discuss styling, that is where we'll discuss more about different units um, that we can use. But for now, we'll use pixels, right? So pixel is the unit which will basically tell us how big the image should be on the screen. Uh, generally, we have a resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels, which means we have 1280 pixels horizontally and then 720 pixels vertically which is your 16 is to 9 aspect ratio. So if you know the term aspect ratio, right, we say it is 16 is to 9 aspect ratio. So which means a landscape view, right, a portrait is the reverse. So if you take a full screen um, aspect ratio for a portrait screen, that would be 9 is to 16 generally. And this is 16 is to 9 um, horizontally, right. So we have 1280 by 720. That's basically the pixel that we have. So assume that we have 1280 pixels horizontally and 720 pixels vertically. You can set it that much, right? So here, if you see, we have 300 and 500. So it makes a total of 800. But since my browser is only half the screen, I only have 600 pixels. So it goes to the next line. Right? If I just increase the browser, you can see it will fit on the same line. So uh, approximately, generally, we have 1280 pixels normally. Again, it depends on monitor to monitor and every device will have a different pixel size, right? So that is your uh, width. Now, uh, when it comes to adding an image from the device, let's say you have downloaded something and you want to add it that way, then I'll show you what to do now. So again, let me just download an image quickly. Um, let's download this hand, I guess. So again, to download an image from Unsplash, you can just click on this green download free button. And it will basically just tell you where do you want to download it. I have downloaded the small size. And then it will just ask us where do you want to save it. And I will just choose. Uh, let me just choose the correct folder here. So this is in HTML. And yeah, I'll just put it uh, over here. Right. What I can also do is I can quickly just drag and drop it within VS Code so that it shows up in the correct folder, right, done. Now, uh, you can just download it and make sure it is in the same folder where you're writing the code. Then what you can do is just the name of the image. We just have to put the name of the image. Right? So let me rename this, let's call it robot.jpg. And just like we added links, right, we can just do the same thing. So remember how we link to another page on our own project, in our own project, the internal link, that is exactly what we need to do. So just the name of the image and done, right? So if I go back and refresh now, you will see the robot image now shows up. And I don't think we need this width. It should be small enough as you can see, right? So again, the first option here, the first piece of code here is how we put this um, 
image from our own system from our own system on the web page and then this is how we put the image from the internet on the web page right so generally you know um, recommendation is to use this approach because you never know if you refer to an external website it could not be available something could go wrong the company could shut down it could disappear anything could can happen but when you add something from your own system then it is not going anywhere because it is always available in your project right so this is uh, recommended over the second approach the adding images from our own system is recommended over the second approach right now there is one more thing here which is how do we actually um, add an image from another folder so let us say that we have another folder called images right and our image is available within that folder so the structure here is we have our html file in that we have a folder called images and within that image we within that folder we have the actual image so if i refresh now you will see the image will go away and it will show us the alt text so to fix this what we have to do is we have to give what is called the folder path folder path to the image right so we have to start from the current file and we have to go till the image is available till where the image is so for example in terms of index.html this is the current uh, location so from this we have to tell where the image is so we tell the user that uh, we tell the browser there is a folder called images and then slash to go inside the folder and within that you will find this image so this is how we tell the browser that the image is inside another folder now if i refresh you will see the image will work fine right so this is how we tell the browser that it is inside a folder we have put the folder name and then a slash to go inside the folder similarly if you have to come out one folder we have to put dot dot slash so dot dot slash will basically uh, indicate out like go out one step and then the only slash will be go inside the folder one step so images slash would mean go inside the images folder here let's say we have another folder called landing and we can put another slash so it will first go to the images folder then go to the landing folder and then try to find the image over there but it will not work because the image is not there and there is no folder called landing if i create one if i create a folder called landing and put the image inside that one then it will start working now so hopefully this makes sense right so whenever we are adding an image from our own system we have to use this kind of a folder structure where we tell the browser where the image is starting from the current file where we are right so from our html file again it could be any page not just the index page from our very uh, from our location from the current file we have to basically navigate till we reach the image so we are going to the images folder inside the images folder we have another folder called landing and within that landing folder we have the image so we tell the browser go to images then inside that you will find a folder go to landing and there you will find the image right so this is basically how we add an image from our system and similarly this is how we add an image from the internet so make sure you specify the alt for all images right so again this could basically be robot um P, i guess so we can call it whatever is relevant but we must use the alt it is a very important criteria put out by search engines which basically you know uh, recommend putting alt tags for all images so if you do a check on what is wrong one of the first things the first problems that happens to increase let's say the ranking on google and stuff like that is missing alt tags that's a very big concern uh, out there so yes this is how we add images in html and yes now um, i'm open to questions on this so if you have any doubts or questions in terms of adding images let me know and then we'll move to the next media type so i'll just give you a minute you can just uh, type your questions down in the chat if there are any let me answer those and then we'll move to the next uh, media type again i am i have youtube chat open on the side i have zoom chat open as well so i'm looking at both the chats so wherever you are you can put a question in the chat if there is anything and i'll help you out with that so yes so when we have downloaded an image and you want to add that on the website it's very simple you just have to put the image name just like we link to an internal page that is the exact same way for adding a downloaded image you can just go to where the image is that's it so just specify the image in the source and that will add it 
that's how you add a downloaded image for an image on the internet you can directly copy image address right remember you don't have to copy image but copy image address so you copy image address you put that address in the source and that's it that will add the image from the internet right uh, okay if you're wondering which tool i'm using so i've said this multiple times i am using visual studio code um, we've discussed this in the very first session this was the tool you were supposed to download for writing the code so you can um, just look for it if you haven't received the document if nothing has happened still just open google type visual studio code right this is the name i'll type it out on the screen visual studio code it's a simple download. It'll take one minute to download. You can install it. That is where I'm writing all the code. And then of course I'm running it on Google Chrome, right? So that is the, that is where the code is coming from. And this is the tool I'm using to write the code. Uh, if you're wondering how to create folders and all, you can just open your Explorer and create it over there. So don't worry about how I am doing it within VS code. You can just open windows Explorer, go to the folder, create a new folder from there. It will all work the exact same way. You can download an image, drag and drop it, or just cut and paste it in Windows Explorer. It will work the same way, right? And uh, okay, let's see if there's anything else. Okay, so if you want the image to be a clickable link, you can then put that inside the A tag, right? So you can just put the A tag and then you can specify where you want to go over here. So let's say, for example, www.google.com. And then if you click on the image so if, and you click on the image, it will open Google as you can see. So you can add it in the A tag, right? Uh, you can add it within the A tag and that then becomes a link. So if you're wondering how to make the image clickable, you can uh, wrap it with the link tag or the A tag. Uh, no. So if you add an image from your own system, it needs to be in the project folder. Like you can see, we have a folder called images within our HTML file. So when we deploy the website, which we'll talk about at the end of the course, then we'll also add the image along with our HTML code. So we'll also upload the images to our server. So that way the images will always be available on our own server. Right? So that is uh, how we will not um, face issues um, you know, when other people want to access it, it will be available on our server. So it's fine. Right. Um, so yes, I hope that answers that question as well. Um, so yes, even if you add images from our system, it needs to be in the project folder. That is important. Don't add an image using something like, you know, C and then uh, downloads and something like that. Don't do this. This is a problem because this image will never be available to anybody else. But if it is in the same folder, then when we deploy, the image goes along with the code and that way it will be available. Um, done. Again, when it comes to positioning, right? Uh, positioning the image in the center or left or right, what we will do is we'll do it with CSS. So we'll discuss about it later. Right? For now, we're just focusing on adding things to the page, right? And uh, perfect. I think this is these are all the questions for now. And yes, now let's move to the next one. Um, the next media type, which is audio. So here I want to show you one more resource. I'm pretty sure you guys know this already. Uh, there are two resources. So the first resource is called w3schools.com um, and the second resource is called MDN, right? So I'm just going to quickly um, search for that. So W3 schools, right? This is a very important resource for any web related things. And again, you can see they have uh, tutorials on everything more or less. So we'll go to HTML, right? And then once you go to HTML, you can find everything over here. This is just so that you can remember the syntax and you don't have to memorize it. You can go here, look up the syntax and use that, right? So here, now let me find the audio tag. You can see there's a section called HTML media and there is an audio section over here. So we can just copy this for now, right? And this is basically your audio tag. So how audio works is very simple. We have the opening and the closing audio tag, first of all, right? And then we have to specify the source of that audio, okay? Which is, where is the audio? What is the audio file? So as you can see over here, we have something called horse.mp3, which is available. 
and then you have to specify the type of the file. So is it an MP3 file? Is it an OGG file? Um, there are different audio types. So you have to specify which type of file it is. And then this message, right? This uh, message will show up only if the browser does not support this audio element. So if you're using a really old browser, like Internet Explorer or something like that, which is very old, then this will show up, which will tell the user that this is not supported uh, on your browser. Right. So this is how we can add the audio tag, right, uh, in HTML. And again, let me just um, resize this and put it side by side. And if I refresh now, you will see the browse or the images go away because I've commented those out and the audio shows up. Right. So this is the audio element. And of course, you need to have a valid MP3 file. So right now I don't have a valid MP3 file. So let me just look for songs MP3. Right. And I'll just um, try to find a quick, I guess, um, song. Any song will work. We just need an MP3 file. Right. So let me just um, quickly find one. And I will just download it. So let's see if there is a download button here. Uh, no, I don't think this website has downloads. Uh, download songs MP3. Okay, I think this one does. And There is download. Let's see if this works. And again, I'm going to put it in the same folder as our image. So this is an MP3 file should be fine. And I will just drag it and drop it over here. And yes, now we have an MP3 file. Perfect. Let's go ahead and check that out. So all we have to do now is just like an image, exactly like an image from our system. What we can do is we can just put the name of the song over here. So let me just rename this. To make it simpler, let's call it song.mp3 to keep it very simple. And then we can just put that over here, song.mp3 done. As soon as I refresh now, you will see that the song is now available. I can play it. Right. I'm sure you heard the heard that. It's a pretty loud uh, audio. But yes, so as you can probably see, you know, it is working. And we also have all the other standard controls. Like we can set the playback speed. We have the volume control. We have the mute and mute button. We have the volume control here. This is fast forwarding the song, the play button. All of these things are available. This is the audio tag, right? This is how we work with an audio tag. Uh, there are a couple of other things also. So in this controls, we also have something called autoplay, which we don't want to use. I will not run the code with this, but autoplay will basically start the audio as soon as the page loads up. So as soon as something happens on the page, like as soon as the page loads up, it will start playing automatically and it is very annoying uh, for the users. It, most browsers have stopped supporting this. Um, they, they don't allow the autoplay attribute anymore. So yes, you should be very careful with you know how you use or when you use autoplay. But this is how we add an audio. And then in the exact same way, we have video. So if I just replace audio with video, uh, we have a video tag. And again, just like the audio, we have to specify the video source. So the video source will be .mp4 or some other format. You know, there is there are like seven, eight different video formats. Um, there is FLV, there is MKV, there are different video formats. Uh, you can choose whichever format you want to add. I'll show you one quick example. So let me just, again, I will just get a video quickly. Just give me one second. I have it in one of the folders. So I'll just copy that. Okay, here it is. So I have a video, it's called demo.mp4 as you can see on the screen now. And again, you just have to put that and just refresh the page. 
and you will see the entire video shows up so this is something i just uh, you know took a screenshot of in the morning uh, just to show you how this works so again it's the exact same process we just have to put the source and that way it will show up so if i just make this bigger um, you can probably see we can also control the height and width like we did you know with the image so we can just put the width let's say at 500 pixels and it should make it smaller a little bit as you can see and again the height and width work the same way like images for video as well it does not work for audio because there is nothing to display there but yes for a video we can set that and again you will see all the standard controls are there full screen shows up there's a playback speed the picture in picture um, control shows up there's a play pause button right you can fast forward you know do this uh, volume controls all of the standard things show up for a video as well so this is how we add audio and video again I'll keep the code on the screen for a minute. You can quickly just check that out and let me know if you have any doubts or questions in this. I will move to iframe next. That's the next tag that's coming up. But before iframe, this is um, these are three media things or three different media pieces that we have discussed. So we have image, audio, video. Um, again, I'll just uncomment this as well. This is the image tag, right? So I will keep all of this on the screen together. You can see this and uh, yes. So we have image, then um, audio, and then video. So MPEG basically stands for all MP formats. So um, you can put MP4 or also keep it MPEG. It will still be fine. So MP stands for all MP3, MP4 formats. It will be the same thing. But yes, you can also change this to MP4. And yes, it will be video. Video slash MP4 or video slash MPEG. This will work fine. right? And of course, you can show as well. But yes, this is how we add a video. This is how we add an audio. This is how we add an image. Uh, for image, we usually have two options, either from the internet or from our system. But audio and video are generally added from our system itself because we don't really get direct MP4 files from the internet. So we usually download it or it is somewhere on our server and we add it from there. Right. So audio and video are exactly the same. Uh, and of course, this controls is important. So this is an attribute which does not require any value. But if you don't specify these controls, then you will see uh, it will not show up, right? Nothing shows up for audio, if you can see. So these controls are very important. Without it, you can see the element itself will not show up. So it's very important to specify, uh, you know, controls. And there is also something called loop. There's another value that is called loop. So loop is if the song finishes playing, it will restart again. So it will basically play infinitely. That is, you know, kind of like how a reel is on Instagram. It keeps repeating itself until, you know, we change to the next one. So that's a loop. It will keep repeating until we do some action to stop it, basically. So these are a couple of things related to media, uh, which is images, audio and video. Perfect. Now, the next thing uh, or the final media type that is available in HTML is something called an iframe, right? So, right, uh, iframe is the next thing. And again, this is what it looks like. So, iframe. And for the iframe, we have opening, closing. And then, of course, you can check the uh, W3Schools reference quickly if you want to. So, I'm just showing this to you so that you understand, you know, when to refer to these kind of things. So uh, let's search for an iframe. Um, it should be here, I guess. Yes. So you can see iframe. And again, I will just copy paste it from that. And you can see this one. So this is a link that is coming from YouTube. And we actually get a separate link. I'll show you how to get that also. Um, there is a separate way to get this iframe link from YouTube. But if I refresh for now, you will see that this particular song shows up. Right. This is a YouTube video, as you can see. And let me also comment out this image so that we focus on the iframe. So an iframe basically is short for Internet frame. Right. So Internet frame basically means putting any other website onto your website. So even if I change this to something like, let's say, www.google.com and I refresh again, you will see that Google refused to connect. Right. So this is a problem. Let me just put in one of my projects. So I know it will work because I have set it up that way. If I refresh now, you will see this entire website shows up within our iframe. Right. So this is the iframe tag. 
what it allows us to do is we can embed anything from the internet within our web page that is iframe provided of course they have not banned it they have not banned it basically so as you can see the entire website loads up and you can check it out over here so um, all our google ads right all the ads that we see on the website those are all iframes every single advertisement you see on any website that is running through this iframe tag because it is basically showing us another website onto our page so that is an iframe right uh, specifically for youtube however what we can do is we get a separate uh, section on youtube i'll just show you uh, let me just pick um i'll just pick one song probably let's pick this song right so do you know what and now what you can do is in this youtube you can go to a section called share right you can click on share then you can get an option called embed so this is the first option that shows up and you can see you get the entire iframe tag over there so you can just copy this and paste it right so youtube as you can see gives us the entire iframe directly and now if i just refresh you will see uh, the video will show up over here right so there's probably something wrong with um the youtube player here but as you can see it gives us the entire code itself right? if you check youtube uh, you will get the entire code itself for any video right? not oh. just for this video so for this what you have to do is go to share inside share you will see embed that's what you need to take up and then again there is the entire code available over here just copy that right or you could also create your own iframe and get this link just this link and that should be fine right so for example if i just take this link and i paste it over here within our iframe and let's remove this and let's check it out so again refresh and again so this is a google setting they have disabled it i guess um they might give it only to some developer accounts but this is how we can add anything from the internet right so you go to a video it could also be the video setting uh, there are all sorts of controls on Looks youtube good, yeah. when you upload a video you will get an option do you want it to be shareable or not so this is probably set it you know they have set it that way that it is not shareable uh, in that sense but yes so we can go ahead you know and we can find a video for example uh, which supports this sharing and we can probably use that so let me just see if i can take one of my uh, videos so let's again click on a video right then share and embed and copy let's see if it works i am not 100% let's check so refresh and you will see this works right so let me remove the first one so this is again a youtube setting which the channel can set do you want the video to be able to embed so as you can see here this is working fine and again all standard controls are here right so you can click here to go to youtube watch later share full screen these are all youtube controls coming from youtube right so yes as you can see we have uh, four different ways of adding media files onto our page we have discussed all of them so image audio video and iframes so in iframe we have to specify the width and the height and then the source of the uh, link whatever you want to load up in case of youtube you can go to share and get the code directly in case of other websites you can just paste it in the source so just the link of the website and it will show up right so a lot of people use this to embed google forms uh, within a page uh, they use it to embed some sort of poll or analytics within the page it's used for all sorts of uh, different purposes right so yes that is what we have in terms of media types or media in html these are the four different things so we have images audio video and iframes that's practically everything we need uh, you know to add all sorts of media items to our website so again we have images with the img tag then we have audio with the audio tag then video with the video tag and then external embeds are done with the iframe right so now let's take questions on these if you have any doubts or questions on these uh, let me know in the chat and uh, yes so is yes, uh, width and height it by default is pixel so if you don't specify anything it is pixels only so even if you just write a value but the default value is always pixels um sumit so video tag will allow urls also but generally it needs to be a mp4 url which is something we don't find usually we don't get a direct link to mp4 files 
so yes that's why we prefer videos from our systems but yes if you have it on google drive or something like that then you can use that yes firebase urls will work fine uh, vimeo urls will work fine so all of those things will work um so Jaswant is asking, can we download our thumbnails from an MP3 file? No, uh, Jaswant, actually it's not directly possible. Um, you might have to get it separately and then you know you can put it with the image tag. So you can put them together. You can put the image and the audio together. So the thumbnail also shows up. But an MP3 file usually does not, um, you cannot break it down and extract the thumbnail from it. Okay, and okay, uh, let me see a couple more. I will explain iframe again, sure. There are three, four people who want me to explain that again. So yes. Uh... Okay, so the way for browsers that don't support these files, you can just give them an error. That's the best you can do. So as you can probably see in the video tag also, we mentioned your browser does not support video. In audio, we are saying your browser does not support audio. That's basically all we can do. But now, you know, no matter what browser you pick, all browsers support these things. Unless you are using a five-year-old browser, which is something like Internet Explorer, other than that, all standard browsers, everything supports all of these tags. So that should not be a problem. But yes, uh, the most we can do in that case is just show an error and tell the user to please switch to a browser which does support this. That's basically, that's the best we can do. Uh, yes, quickly coming back to iframe. So the iframe tag, you know, works something like iframe, opening, closing. And then iframe again stands for internet frame. Right, internet frame. That's basically what iframe is. Um, that's how I call it basically. And then we have to specify the source over here. So we specify what do you want to show, right? We can also specify height and width if you have a constraint. So generally, if you see advertisement, they are on specific parts of the page. So it's either a square box or a rectangle box or a circle. So you specify specific, you know, specify the height and width so that only that much space is taken by an advertisement on the page so for example you can put anything over here again i just put one of my because i know it works uh, this is again a setting which you know the um, developer needs to make so if you want to allow embeds or not that is something for you to decide when you develop that's a back-end thing we'll talk about it uh, when we discuss back -end. and then we can just set the height and width if you want to uh, so again you can either specify both of these yourself or just specify one of these things and the other one will automatically be set. So if you don't specify height, for example, it will automatically be set with the width, right? So based on width, height will automatically be set. But if you want custom control, you can specify both. So as you can see, it works either way. And yes, then the page will load up and we can just access it like a normal page. So this is basically your iframe. That's practically how it works, right? You can see the entire website shows up uh, in this. So all advertisements, all external links, um, all embeds, all of them work with the iframe tag. Again, I'm putting the video tag on the screen once again. So it's very simple. We have the opening and the closing video, right? Um, opening, closing video, and then the source. The source should point to a video file, and then you can specify width and controls. Similarly, we have the audio, which looks like this. Right. So this is the audio again, within which you can specify a source and that's basically it. Right. And yeah, that is how we add all sorts of media files onto HTML. And yes, I hope that answers all the questions that are there in the chat. Um, we have covered all questions now. I have also repeated everything two, three times. So hopefully that is now clear. Uh, perfect. Now let's jump on to the next major agenda for the session, uh, which is again going to be tables in HTML, right? So if you see on the screen, this is what a table should look like, right? So again, if you want to make anything clickable, put it inside the A tag, right? Simple. If you want to make an image clickable, put it inside the A tag. Uh, if you want to make a text clickable, put it on, put it inside the A tag that will make it a link right simple i i hope you understand that now 
So whatever needs to become a link, you can wrap it with the A tag, put the href and it becomes a link, right? Now, uh, the next thing that we have here are tables. So as you can see over here, this is a sample table. Again, this was a game. I don't know if you guys have played this, but I used to play this a lot. Um, you know, uh, when I was a kid, um, this was uh, one of the games that we used to play a lot with friends and also in family. We called it name, place, animal thing. And how the game works is we are given a character, an, an alphabet. Let's say, for example, the first thing, if you see P, right? So what you have to do is you have to guess uh, the name of a person, the name of a place, the name of an animal and the name of a thing with P starting with P. So similarly, you can see there are four examples here. We have P, M, A and V. Right? Again, let me know in the chat if you also played this game or if you know what this game is. It's just called name, place, animal thing. Very simple. Uh, the reason I'm taking it as a reference is that we need to make a table in HTML, right? So. Uh, now you have to understand very carefully how this table works because it does not work like a normal table. In a normal table, what do we do? We have rows and columns, right? So we have rows um, that are horizontal and we have columns that are vertical, normal table. But in HTML, what we do is we only have rows. There are no columns in HTML tables, right? Basically the number of values inside a row decides the number of columns. Let me show you what I mean. So again, let us switch back to the code and the code is very simple. We have table opening and closing, right? So this is a table and of course nothing will show up right now because there is no content inside the table. So let us create a row that is TR. TR tag is a table row. Within this, we can have a TD, which is table data. Within this, we can have anything. So if you want a heading, if you want an image, if you want a link, uh, anything that you want to add as a content can be inside the TD. Let us say we want to add a paragraph, right? And I will just say, uh, I'll just put some dummy content using lorem ipsum. So again, uh, if you are wondering where I get this dummy content from, um, there is an extension which you have to install uh, for this. So um, basically what you need to do is you need to type in L-O-R-E-M and then tab. So this is something that VS Code supports and it basically just gives us some dummy content. So L-O-R-E-M and the tab key, this gives us some dummy content. So let me just paste it twice, just uh, reduce this much and paste it twice. Now, if I refresh the page, right, you will see that there are two, uh, two columns that show up. Right? Of course, there is no border yet, but you can see that it looks something like a table. It looks a little bit like a table. So what we can do is we can specify the columns here. So we can say table border equal to one. Now in a refresh, you will see the border also shows up. I know it looks ugly. Uh, HTML tables are not the best looking tables out there. But yes, uh, we can specify that with CSS. So that will come later. But if you see the output, you can clearly see that there are two columns that show up. So this is what we have to understand, right? The number of items inside a table row make the number of columns in the table. So in this case, this is a table row, right? TR. Within the table row, we have two table data elements or two table data tags. So that is why we see two columns in the output. The number of data items inside the row make up the number of columns in the output. Right? Is that clear? That is how tables work. Very simple. Right? We have TD, which is the table data. And so the number of TD elements within the row will decide the number of columns in the output. Okay? So if I just make one more row, I will just copy and paste it. You can see now we have two rows and two columns. And we can keep going. We can keep adding as many rows as we want. And, um, okay. Right? And let me just close this. So as you can see, now we have four you know, four um, rows and two columns each. Let us say that we go ahead and we add one more TD everywhere, right? So I will just add, don't worry about the code. It's very simple. I'm just adding one more TD everywhere. So that now what should happen is we should see three columns as you can now see, right? So we have three, uh, four rows and three columns because each row contains three items. As you can see, this is one row, right? So this one row contains three TD items or three TD tags that makes it three rows, uh, sorry, three columns in the output, right? 
So this is how tables work in HTML. It's very simple. We make the opening and the closing table. Then we make a table row. And then the number of items inside the row make up the number of columns. That's it. Right? These are the fundamental table tags that you need to know. Is that clear? Does that make sense? All right, perfect. Now what we do have over here are a couple of other specialty tags. So when I say specialty tags, these are tags that perform special tasks, right? For example, uh, usually what happens is if you're looking at a table like this, right? Then the first row is usually different as you can probably see that right? the first row contains, um, you know, uh, the first row contains the headings of the table and it is usually centered as you can probably see over here. So to get something like this, what we have is we have a special tag called TH. So again, we can make a TR and then we can use TH instead of TD. So this TH stands for table header. Again, let's say, for example, this is name. This is place. This needs to be again a paragraph actually. So name, right? Then place. Let me put one more over here, which will be animal. And let's put one more, which makes it a thing. Right? So that completes our table or our game. Now, if I refresh, you will see we get name place. Oh, I forgot to put place there. So if I refresh again, you can see we have name, place, animal and thing. But of course, there is no value for thing because we only have three TDs. Right. So that is how it works. There is a special tag. As you can see, it is TH. So this TH tag is table head or table header. Right. So again, table is table, right? table is table, TR is table row, TH is table header, TD is table data. So only the first row generally contains TH, which is what we see. Uh, one second. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Uh, there. So the first row contains table headers. And then from the second row onwards, we usually contain TD, right? So again, let me just put one more TD everywhere so that we have four columns and four rows now. So put that there and there. Perfect. So now if I refresh, you will see that right, we have some data for all of these. As you can see, that's practically it. Right? This is the basic structure of a table. Now, uh, when it comes to styling this table, we actually divide this into two different sections. Right. So we usually make it into three different sections to be uh, to be more precise. So let me show them to you now. We have something called TH. Okay. Again, this is just a container tag. Nothing will change in the actual output. So T head is the header of the table. And you can see if I press, nothing changes. This is just a container tag which we will use in CSS. Okay. Now in VS Code, we can also just minimize this tag like this. So all the code within T head will just be minimized for now. Then we have the next section T body. T body will contain all the data of the table, right? So everything that is there in the table in terms of data that will go inside the T body. Okay. So that thing called T footer or T foot. This is the last part of the table, which is where we usually put something called caption, which is where we specify what this table is for. So we can say name, place, animal, thing, game. We can usually, we usually put something like this. We put table one, for example. Again, you might have seen this in textbooks always. So this is the caption, as you can see. It shows up at the top. Table one, name, place, animal, thing, game. It is always centered to the table. And it's just like a label, just like we see in images or in textbooks. It's a label that we can give. So that is the caption. And again, this T foot is not really used much. But it is a tag. But yes, we put the caption usually at the top of the table like so, right? So we have caption, then we have the table head, and then we have the table body. Table head usually just contains first row, right? So the first row with the TH that goes in the table head and everything else, the rest of the content then goes inside the table body, which is T body. Okay. Uh, is this clear? Is this making sense now? Uh, just when I've already responded to your doubt, I've already said that there is no direct way to extract the thumbnail from an MP3. 
uh, what you will have to do is use a separate image tag and then along with the audio you can basically put it together in a you know like one by one image will come separately and the mp3 will come separately there is no direct way to get the um, you know get the image uh, or thumbnail from the mp3 i have already cleared your doubt i hope this time you have heard it uh, so yes that is done and i don't see any other doubts as of now um yes so yes those are all the questions so far perfect so this is how a table works right in html so again um, like i said to add anything basically the number of rows are indicated by the tr tag and then the number of columns are decided by the number of items inside the row right so if you see for example in one table row we have one two three and four items there are four td tags inside every row so that means there are four columns in the table okay that is how it works then uh, we use these tags t head and t body just to wrap things up so what that means is uh, when we style it right we might want if you see this image for example you will see that when the table gets styled right the the header part of the table which is this part uh, one second let me choose another color there so this entire section which is the header of the table this needs to be styled differently the background color is blue the text color is white right and then the rest of the table is styled differently you can see this entire table this is styled differently so that is why we use t head and t body t head is for the first row which contains the headings of the table and then t body is for the rest of the content so that when we go to style it in css we'll be able to see that differentiation and understand it better right so that is uh, that is why we use t head and t body just this is just a wrapper just a container tag we are not really uh, doing anything in terms of display yet so when we style the table that is when we'll need these two tags so for now we are just adding them in so that they are available and then we'll style it later right perfect uh, that is done and uh, So yes, if you want to put the caption at the bottom, all of those things are available. Again, the styling will happen with CSS. So I'll keep all the styling for later. For now, we are just focused on the default things available in HTML and what kind of content we can add in to the screen. And that's basically what we are focusing on um, right now. Okay, perfect. So this is again, what we have in terms of tables in HTML. So I hope that makes sense. And uh, yes, now if you have any questions in terms of tables, please let me know. Uh, it would be great if we keep the questions specific to the topic. So I see a lot of questions which are off topic in the chat, um, maybe from a previous session. I don't mind answering them, but let's keep them towards the end. When I ask you uh, if you have any questions in the middle of a topic, let's keep the question specific to the topic that we're discussing. Uh, perfect. Okay, let me check the chat now. Yes, so Dinesh, we'll talk about div tags in the next uh, session that is coming up next. For now, uh, we're just adding content. Once we discuss all the content tags, then we will move to, you know, talking about divs and spans and all of those tags later. Our uh, difference between iframe and video uh, is, uh, Nitin, iframe is you can add anything from the internet, including a YouTube video. So anything external to your project can be added using an iframe. A video is for only video. So that only supports MP4 or other video formats. iframe supports anything. It could be a PDF. It could be a, a web page. It could be a YouTube video, anything basically outside your um, project, outside your web page that is. Oh, yes, I will share the code uh, in a minute. I, I will just put this on GitHub and I will share it with you. Once we move to the questions at the end of the session, we'll I will share the code with you. Don't worry. Everything that we've written so far, I will share it with you. I'll give you a link um, wherein you will find all of this code. Right. And uh, again, so we will discuss the head tag, body tag, all of those things later. So for people who already know HTML, uh, don't worry, we'll not miss out anything. There are still a lot of tags that we are yet to discuss. But like I said, let's keep the question specific to what we have discussed so far. 
so we will talk about everything we'll talk about you know um, doc type and head body title all of those things will come in uh, but after we finish off with the content part uh perfect i think those are all the questions as of now great uh, there is one final thing that we want to discuss today which are forms in html so again it's a very simple setup uh, the tag is form of course that's what it is uh, that's the tag for adding a form in html and then of course uh, inside the form we can add all the different kinds of inputs that we want so for example if we want the input type equal to text this will show up a text box on the screen if i refresh you will see a text box shows up and i can type in it right so this is how we can create a form in html the only difference is the type of the input basically 90% of the forms uh, has only this difference right so we have opening and closing form and then we have different types of inputs so for example if i put type password here then you will see that this okay let me remove these for now so this one will basically contain you know different the password style as you can see so this is text and this is password it chooses those black black bullets instead of what we are typing it hides that right uh, okay here's a quick question for you so as you can see these show up next to each other but i want it on the next line which tag should i use so that it can, it can go to the next line right? these things are next to each other i want the password input to go to the next line which tag can i use for this the br tag perfect so what we can do is we can put a br like so like so and now you will see they show up under each other so this is our text input this is our password input perfect uh, let's add the next type there are a lot of these types about a dozen different types i will not show you every single one uh, but i will show you the most common used so then we have email right and then again if i refresh this is email so again it will not look different but i'll show you how it is different right then we have something called a checkbox. Again, this is a checkbox, as you can see, right? Um, then we have something called a radio. This is a radio button, again, which will be uh, uh, one of the three choices that we have. For example, we have something like this. You can choose one of these three. So checkboxes are for multiple selection. Radio buttons are one of these. Right? Choose any one of these kind of a thing. Right. Um, then we have something called um, what? Then we have something called file. So this will pick up the file upload. As you can see, choose file and it opens up the file picker. Right. Uh, then we have something called so this is uh, you have to put the uh, American or the English spelling, not the Indian spelling, but the C O L O R, not C O L O U R. It will not work. So we have to use the American uh, English here. And then we have the color picker. As you can see, this is a color picker. And, you know, so on and so on and so on. So we have so many different types of inputs that are available. We can pick anything. It's very simple. Uh, the format for all of this is exactly the uh, exactly same, which is input type equal to this. Now, there are a couple of other attributes that are important for an input. So one attribute is called placeholder. And placeholder will basically be the default value. So if I refresh now, you will see there is this default value that shows up. And as soon as I start typing, it will go away. Right. So this default value that shows up, this is again coming from the placeholder attribute. We can set it, you know, for all text tags. So for example, we can say user name here, right? Then for the password, we can put a placeholder a password here. So just prompting the user, you know, so that they know what is to be inserted. So we can say email here and so on so the user will know that okay this is what we need to put in so the form looks so much better now because it is now telling the user what needs to be done right so that is how that works uh, then checkbox again we can just type something in over here uh, i agree to terms and conditions for example and it will show up next to the checkbox as you can see this looks like a proper checkbox now for the radio actually let's just uh, you know put in um, values. So let's just say we are looking at um, maybe courses. So we will put CSE, right? We will put, um, let's say, mechanical and let's put electrical. So for now, we just have three. Again, you can add as many as you want. 
But by default, you will see all of these can be selected. Right? As you can see, all of these can be selected. So to make this choice to a single one, what we need to do is give it a common name. So we can say, for example, name equal to branch, right? And I will put the same name on all three. And now you will see only one of them can be selected. So as long as the radio buttons have a common name, it is one of those choices, right? one of those. So you can see for these three, we have given the name branch. So now you can choose only one out of the three. Okay. If you don't give that name, then you can choose everything, which is not what we want. So that's how it works. You have to specify a common name for the radio buttons. Again, we'll talk more about name in detail when we discuss the backend um, for forms. But you can see when we put a name, it will basically choose only one of these. Right. So these are some standard, you know, pieces of code uh, regarding a form. Okay. So this is how a form works, as you can see. Uh, finally, there are two other inputs which are really important. So one of them is um, input type equal to submit. So this will show up a submit button, as you can see. Right. So this shows up a submit button on the screen. And then there's another called reset. So we have input type equal to reset. Okay. So this reset uh, is basically just going to clear out all the values. So let's say we have just typed a couple of things in, right? And I've just chosen everything and I reset. So all of this will be lost. Reset will simply clear the form and, you know, just reset it. That's basically what the name says. So that is what reset is. Okay. Then again, we can put all of these things in, for instance, and now you will see the magic of the email type, right? So remember, we have put input type equal to email. So now, once we put some data in, it is going to tell the user, please include an at the rate in the email address. It is not a valid email. So this is the magic of your email uh, type. It will basically tell the user, this is not a valid email. So until you put an email, you can see again, please enter a part following this. So until it becomes a valid email, it will keep giving the error, right? And only if it becomes a valid email, then it will be submitted. As you can see, now the form has been submitted and everything is back to reset. Everything is cleared out. So these are all the standard options that we have, you know, when it comes to a form. Um, there are a couple of other things in the form which we will talk about later. Uh, so we have a drop down, we have all of those things, but I think this is too much for a day. So we'll continue with the form, you know, in the next session and we'll just go from there. But yes, for now, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, but before that, let's take some questions if you have any. So again, when it comes to forms, it's very simple. We have the opening and the closing form tag, right? And within this form tag, all we need mostly are different types of inputs. So we have input type equal to text, type equal to password, type equal to email, checkbox, radio, uh, file, color. There are a lot of other types. If you just go to W3 schools and you check out forms right over here, let's go to HTML and let me look at forms, right? So you will see there are so many types that are available. If I just keep scrolling, you will see there are so many different types of inputs um, that are available. So what you need to do is, um, yes, here, there's an entire list. As you can see, right? these are all the different inputs that are available. So we have date input, date time input, we have month, um, you know, we have range, we have search, we have telephone number, we have time, we have URL, all of these types of inputs are available, right? So you can experiment with them when you get some time, try these out. But what I've shown you are just some of these. Of course, we don't have, it doesn't make sense to show you everything. But yes, you can, you know, just what you can do is probably just copy this as it is and just paste it in the code right, so that you get to see pretty much everything on the screen. So if I just paste it over here and I just refresh, you will see these are all the different types of inputs that are available. And there are so many, as you can probably see, right? We have so many. So all the way from, you know, um, text inputs to check boxes to um, color input, this is a date time, this is date and time, this is just a date picker, then you have week picker, right? So this will only be which week of the month it is, you have file picker, you have, um, you know, um, again, month and year, this is a value, which is again, used for feedback and stuff like that. So there are so many different things, right, which are available. But again, we'll um, discuss them one by one as and when we need them. It does not make sense to discuss everything in one go it becomes too much to understand. 
So yes, I hope that this makes sense. And yes, now let me know if you have any questions on the form that we have discussed. And you know, by now you should also be a little more clearer on how HTML works. It's very simple. You just need to know the correct tag for the correct thing. And that's it. Right? As soon as you know, this tag is used table tag, form tag, image tag, audio tag, you, you will understand those things better. Right? So it's very simple as you can see. <laughs> So yes, this is basically all we had for the, you know, for discussion in terms of code as such. And um, yes, now um, I just want to talk about one more thing quickly, which is, um, yes, so we have talked about the form part. We'll continue with the form later, like I said, uh, but uh, this will come in. And yes, so now I have three quick questions for you. This time I've put them on the screen directly because there was a problem uh, because they were not visible on YouTube. Uh, YouTube live. So here is the question. I will give you one attempt, uh, one minute to attempt this. You can put the number in the chat. One, two, three, four. Which of these do you think uh, is the correct answer? And then we'll discuss the correct answer and move to the next question. So we have three questions. Um, let's go through them one by one. So here's the first one. You can put the correct answer that you think is the correct answer in the chat. We'll discuss it and then move to the next question. Right. Perfect. So yes, this is the uh, option one. BR is the correct answer. Right. So BR is the tag that uh, mimics the enter key on the keyboard. So yes, uh, perfect. Everybody got this one right. Um, here is the second question. Again, read it very carefully. Think about it and then put what you think is the correct answer in the chat. Okay, so there seems to be some uh, mismatch here. Some people are saying two, three, one, four, all the other options. Basically, all four options have been put in the chat. Um, but yes, the current answer here is since we are using TH, right? TH will be bold and centered. So option two is the correct answer here. Right? A table row with bold and centered text. Remember, we are not using TD. If we had used TD, then the first option would be correct. That would be normal text. But since we are using TH, it will be bold and centered, right? So that is the correct one. Um, here is the next question. So again, think very carefully and then answer. Okay, perfect. So yes, option four, here is the correct answer. So most of you have got this one right. Uh, input type equal to email, like we just saw uh, at the towards the end of the session, we just saw right that the email uh, will basically give you an error saying, please include at the rate. And then, you know, until you complete the whole thing, uh, it will keep giving you errors like that, right? So yes, option four here is the correct answer. Perfect. And uh, yes, that is it, um, you know, for the session as such for today. Uh, just one more thing is that um, what I will be doing is I will just, uh, you know, give you a link in the chat. And this link will basically be a link to uh, the code that we are creating in the session. So I'll just take one minute and... Okay, and I'm just pasting the link in the chat now for both chats. I will put this um, here also and for the YouTube chat also. Just give me one minute. So what I want you to do is just keep this link with you. Make sure you copy this link 
link and keep it with you or just take a screenshot of the chat um just keep this link with you this link is where the code will be added right i have not added it yet uh, because the session is just getting completed but what i will do is i will add the code into this link or on this link right as soon as the session is done okay so just keep um, this just give me a second i'll put it on the youtube chat as well Uh, done. So I added the link in both the chats. It is on the uh, Zoom chat as well. And it is also on the YouTube chat as well. Uh, again, please make sure you keep this link with you. Uh, whatever we discuss in the upcoming sessions also, the entire code will be available on this link itself. Right On this link itself. Everything that we cover in every session here onwards and also the previous sessions uh, that have already happened, I will put the code on this link itself. Okay, so please make sure you copy this link and keep it with you. Right. Uh, I will just paste the link a couple of times again, just in case if you haven't received it, I'm just pasting it a few more times. Please make sure you copy this and keep it right. Um, again, all the code will be put on this link um, by tonight mostly. So you can check it out tomorrow. Um, I will take some time. I'll create it day wise, session wise. So I will add the slides also over there. If you want the slides, I will add those also. And I will also add the code um, over there. Right? So I'll make it session wise, session one, session two, session three like that. So that it will be easy and convenient for you um, to go through this. And I will also add the installation document over here in session one. Right. So remember, there will be a folder called session one. Right, where I will write or uh, where I will add the installation instructions. Okay. So please make sure you go over there and uh, check that. So make sure you install everything before the next session. And I cannot stress on this enough. Uh, make sure you install this. Unless you do, it is not possible to continue learning. Right. Uh, you have to install it. Right. Perfect. Uh, yes. Regarding all other issues, uh, please drop an email to the team. They will help you out with this. But like I said, I will create session wise folders on the link that I have shared with you. And I will give you uh, everything. Slides will be there. Code will be there. Installation instructions will be there. Just give me till tonight. I will put everything over there and you can just go ahead and uh, you know get it all in one place. Right. Um, perfect. So that is it for this session, I guess. And again, when you guys give the feedback, uh, please make sure you know you give the feedback properly. Um, the feedback link has been shared in the chat multiple times. Um, you can also you know just take a minute, make sure you give the feedback right uh, before you um, wrap up. So yes, it's important that you um, you know give the feedback and of course also click your attendance thing. And yeah, that is it for this one. Um, so when we finish with HTML you will get the assessment or the assignment for HTML, right? So after we finish the next session, we need one more session, then HTML will be done. That is when the assignment will be shared with you. There are seven, eight questions which you have to code in HTML and submit. So I'll tell you everything about it when we get there. For now, we've discussed a couple of different things in HTML. Uh, please practice these things and let's meet in the next session and continue from there. Right. So great. Uh, thank you so much you guys for attending. I hope this was helpful and I hope you learned something new. Uh, make sure you fill in the feedback and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.